after studying this module you shall be able to know the general meaning of transmission of culture identify the various models and frameworks of transmissions understand the mechanisms in cultural transmission and number 4 learn more about the barriers in cultural transmission transmission is the process in which we transfer information from one object organism place to another indeed whenever we talk about culture the question come back to us how culture is transmitted from one species organism to another species or organism another question that clicks to one's mind is whether culture is transmitted or not at all if yes what are the pathways is it through genetics or is it through process in culture or maybe some extra super power comes to help us in passing information about our culture from one being to another that is from one individual to the another individual one organism to the another organism with all such questions in one's mind what is the meaning of this world which influences us the meaning of transmission during this course of discussions of transmission one inquire to uncover the process content carriers and mechanisms involved in transmission with this one will specifically like to point out few theoretical framework that had deliberated the understanding of transmission of culture from cross culture perspective or from cross culture point of view as we all understand the meaning of transmission had an indisciplinary relevance therefore i intentionally begin with the phrase transmission of culture the transmission of culture in this context can be applied to ideas symbols or practices that can be passed on from one mind to another through writing speech gestures or through rituals indeed two forms of transmissions genetic and cultural transmission are of interest to cross culture psychologists since the aim of cross cultural psychologists is to search specific ethos within cultures and universal ethos across culture there must be few traits psychic realities that may be transmitted across all species and specific psychological realities that is implicitly dominated in few cultures thus these two transmissions are the guiding principles behind creating universality and relativity across culture the major function of cultural transmission is cultural persistence the roots of thinking about cultural transmission were positioned in biology by cavalli sforza and feldman 1981 these researchers detected that there are two forms of transmission observed from parents to his offspring genetic transmission and cultural transmission cultural transmission is a unique capacity acquired by human beings and requires due consideration in research few researchers suggested that transmission of culture is a passive act and therefore an individual simply assimilate 
schemes in the mind. Therefore, the nature of cultural transmission is a cognitive process. However, Gert argued transmission of culture is largely guided by the language of an individual. Therefore, it should be the part of language domain within the individual. Thus, there had been a long-standing debate between cognitive, implicit versus language, explicit. Indeed, it seems imperative to understand three questions about nature of cultural transmission. A. The carrier of transmission. B. The content of transmission. And C. The mechanism of transmission process. Ute Schonflug proposed that any general theory of cultural transmission should include the conditions of cultural transmission. He highlighted aspects like a. Who is transmitting? Father, mother, parents, teachers, peer group. B. To whom it is transmitted? Offspring, male or female, student or peer. C. At what course of developmental stage? And D. At what context? Playground, home, school, etc. are few condition of cultural transmission that will define the direction and strength of cultural transmission. Taking this stance, the text will expose the nature of cultural transmission and the theoretical frameworks on transmission of culture in developing child that are universal across cultures. Interestingly, these were general frameworks which were formulated to understand development of the child from cross-cultural perspective. However, we will make an effort to analyze these frameworks from the perspective of cultural transmission via cross-cultural perspective. Hence, we will keep two dimensions in mind. A. The conditions of cultural transmission and the working of that model from cross-cultural perspectives. Few aspects that are common in all these frameworks are A. All these frameworks revolve around a child as a central unit of the structure. B. All these understand the process of transmission in some unit of social network, family, school, peers, culture, etc. C. All these frameworks attempt to study a child from a developmental perspective. D. All these frameworks take on cross-cultural perspective while explaining the transmission process of the child. Super and Harkness Framework of Developmental Nike Super and Harkness proposed a theoretical framework of developmental Nike to explain the transmission process of culture within a child. The term Nike, drawn from the field of ecology, refers to the habitat of the animal or organism where the organism develops to its fullest. Similarly, child develops in a habitat that has three basic elements. A. The physical and social setting of an individual includes nutrition, physical ecology, nature of family size and structure, physical space, 
and caretakers in the family b the second substructure of custom and child rearing practice includes level of exposure caretakers practice routines while upbringing the child parental styles education of parents communication styles of the parent c the last substructure includes psychology of the caretakers that is their ethno theories belief systems regarding the culture social representation and type of competencies expected in the cultures these three components interact in a consistent manner and basic to child in his upbringing the three subsystems facilitate the transmission of culture within the child camox applied developmental nike model of super and harkness he contended that the transmission within these systems takes place through process of a gradual immersion according to him immersion occurs when there is a common cultural fund of gestures and activities that can frequently be observed and experienced thus two forms of transmission observed within individuals a via immersion or we can say observational method b second by a teacher according to kemox ethno theories of development are one of the significant feature of development nike they grant importance to indigenous theories of education these theories guide the teaching modalities with the culture in an organized manner bronfen brenner's theory of ecological system one of the most revolutionary theories of development was proposed by bronfen brenner's this theory attempted to include all the systems in the child's life that can impact the development of the child this model emphasizes the systems that revolves around the child and transmits information to the child about their own culture he attempted to provide us with the nature of transmitters that may be most immediate to most distant in the child's environment however each system plays an important role in imparting cultural rules meaning norms to the developing child according to bronfen brenner's there are four concentric circle microsystem mesosystem exosystem and macrosystem the pivot around the child during its development course initially bronfen brenner had also emphasized that each child has unique capacity to acquire things they exhibit variations in abilities age sex and other varied capacities these variations will determine the level with which the child can acquire whatever is given to the child thus it implies that the strength and the level of acquisition will vary from one child to another due to his own unique capacities the second level of ecological system is microsystem microsystem is the most immediate structure that revolves around the child 
This system includes family, school, peers, and neighbors. These structures can communicate clear, frequent information of our culture to an individual during his course of development. These systems will have high degree of impact in the mind of the child and formulate long-term impression about the custom, ritual, and symbols of the culture. The second system, that is, by product of the microsystem, is the mesosystem. This system emerges from the processes taking place in the microsystem, like child rearing practices, dynamics of parents' workplace, ideology of the school system, etc. The third level of system is exosystem that lies at the outside surface in Bronfenbrenner's model. Few examples of the structures in the exosystem include extended family of the child, the friends, family, neighbors, mass media, social welfare services, and legal services of the society. There is a positive correlation between the level of interaction, child and exosystem, and the effect that the system have on the child's persona. These structure in exosystem play a significant role in creating frequent contact with people of other culture. As a result, children's attitudes, beliefs, values are acultured. Children are evolved with the blend of Eastern and Western norms. The last and all-encompassing unit of system observed within the child's development is macrosystem. The macrosystem consists of belief system, bodies of knowledge, attitudes, and ideologies of culture that forms the keystone of all the system mentioned. This implies that these belief systems of the larger culture has been acquired by family, schools, neighbors, media, peer group, relative, and other structure that constantly associate with the child. Bronfenbrenner is one of the most general models that attempt to encompass each substructure that transmits information to the child. This may be sufficient model to give an overview of structures that transmit information to the child. Berry's model of eco-cultural framework of cultural transmission. Berry and Cavalli Sforza, 1986, had further laid out the framework for cultural transmission and acculturation. This framework had emphasized the forms, roots, and processes inherent in cultural transmission. According to Cavalli Sforza and Feldman, 1981, the term cultural transmission is aligned with genetic transmission. As through genes, species perpetuates the behavior traits to its next generation species. Similarly, by using various forms of cultural transmissions, a culture group enables its customs, values, tradition of their culture to its next generations. Indeed, these two forms of transmissions facilitate affordances and constraints within their groups. Constraints can be defined as the limitations of the group 
to acquire a particular behavior. Affordances means opportunity. That is, if alternate opportunity is provided, the species can acquire the trait behavior easily. Roots of cultural transmission Vertical transmission As we can observe, this root emphasizes that the cultural transmission occurs in vertical direction from parents to its offspring. The kind of child rearing practices adopted by parents will impact the acquisition of values, norms, customs and life scripts by the children. Since vertical transmission emphasizes socialization by biological parents to his offspring, biological or genetic transmission often acts as a confounding variable. This form of transmission lays groundwork for the continuity of the culture. It is an unbiased form of transmission where no environment stimuli can affect the generation. Vertical transmission lays the groundwork for the continuity in culture. Horizontal transmission In horizontal transmission, an individual acquires motives, values, culture from its own peer group and other members of the society that share same level. This is a significant route of transmission that persists in each stage of development within the human beings in all context. To illustrate, a child whose parents migrate to a new culture will acquire new system of values, beliefs through peers in schools, colony, etc. Even parents will adapt to new system of culture from their friends in workplace, members of association, etc. Thus, the same illustration is generalized when the child is staying in one's own culture. Oblique transmission Finally, oblique cultural transmission is the third root of cultural transmission, whereby an individual get tutelage from the elders of the society. It can be family members, schools, religious and other institutions, and associations to which the child interacts in day-to-day -day life. They share norms, beliefs, and play important part in formulating attitudes of the individual. This form of cultural transmission also occurs when the individual comes in contact with other society or culture due to several reasons. Forms of cultural transmission There are three forms of cultural transmission observed with the individual in the culture. Enculturation, socialization, acculturation. Enculturation Enculturation is an unconscious form of cultural transmission whereby an individual incorporates certain values, customs, technological inventions, conventions automatically by virtue of being a part of that culture. They are generally born and brought up in that culture. The term enculturation was initially defined and used in field of cultural anthropology by Herkowitz. He emphasized two phases of enculturation involves unconscious process of assimilating knowledge at initial level 
and then conscious process of accommodating the information as the child grows during his lifespan socialization another form of cultural transmission close to enculturation is known as socialization the term socialization was initially developed in the field of sociology socialization is a conscious form of cultural transmission whereby an individual incorporates symbols and signs of the culture through specific instructions and training given by their parents or other members of communities to their offspring a culturation a culturation is the process of re-socialization whereby an individual relearns beliefs customs motives attitude behavioral pattern of another culture in which they get in contact generally an individual migrates in a culture for some time span the two processes exhibited by an aculturate individuals are culture shedding and culture learning culture shedding is the process in which migrants drop their attitudes beliefs customs and behavioral repertoires of their own culture culture learning is the process in which migrants acquire cultural signs and symbols belief system of a new culture as a result various kinds of psychological outcomes like formulation of attitudes beliefs system affect behavioral repertoires that forms the overall part of the personality of an individual will be acquired by an individual living within the society for example people in western cultures are observed to show individualistic mode of thinking and perceiving things while people in eastern countries give more importance to collectivistic mode of thinking tromsdorf framework on intergenerational relations finally the fourth framework i plan to focus on is tromsdorf's framework of intergenerational relations this framework of cultural transmission is relevant to use as it focuses on how the information is transferred from one culture to another tromsdorf's acknowledge the condition of transmission shared by scoop flap an ecocultural framework of cultural transmission proposed by berry however she also emphasizes another important criteria that facilitates transmission processes is relation between two generation she argues that there is a transmission belt in which all relations are places these relations can be characterized by the level of harmony versus conflict between two generations the degree of bond perceived by two groups the extent to which they feel dependency among each other and kind of structure do they follow vertical or horizontal will determine the quantity of cultural transmission across generations finally the last version of cultural transmission that i will like to propose is about dayson disintegrated theoretical framework for cross cultural psychology this seems significant as dayson's had attempted to integrate the four theoretical frameworks 
given and many more not included in our text to provide a holistic framework on development of child. This framework helps to put broader work of all existing research from various frameworks in one perspective. This has larger methodological implications since it attempts to bring out the relationship between each structure to another one. However, one has to be cautious about such simplistic, holistic models for two reasons. A. There may be loss of information. B. Human behavior is complex. To summarize, during the course of our discussion, we uncovered the process, content and carrier, a mechanism involved in transmission and especially pointed out few theoretical frameworks that had deliberated the understanding of transmission of culture from cross-culture perspective. As we all understand, the meaning of transmission had an interdisciplinary relevance. Therefore, we intentionally began with the phrase transmission of culture. We shared few theoretical frameworks that bring out the structure of the transmission process. Interestingly, these were general frameworks which were formulated to understand development of the child from cross-culture perspective or from cross-culture point of view. The first model is developmental Nietzsche model that emphasizes the nature of the habitat suitable for the child's overall development. Similarly, Braun van Brinner model is general model of ecological system. Barry and Cavalli Safoja had further laid out the framework for culture transmission and acculturation. The framework had emphasized the forms, roots and process inherent in cultural transmission. Finally, Thomas Droff model on intergenerational relations highlights how information is transmitted from generations to another. As a conclusion, Dessen's model integrate all the systems of model in a single integrated theoretical framework to understand the transmission of the cultures. Thanks.